uh, for house beer and wine and um, rail cocktails. And then we will, at 6 o'clock, start dinner. But the first part of this meeting, I want to go over just a few things uh, with our company. Um, again, I want to welcome everyone out. And I hope you had a chance to introduce yourself. In case you don't know the person next to you. Because this is going to be a meet and greet the second hour of the, of the meeting. Um, we encourage you to use our title company. You've got your handout right here, Heritage Title. $300 credit for your buyer toward closing. Best rate guarantee that we will beat any other title company's closing cost by $100. And our experienced settlement officers travel anywhere you need them to, Maryland, Virginia, and D.C. So we do appreciate your business. If you've had some uh, not great experiences in the past, we've got new employees over there, and we would love if you could just give us another try. That's how we're able to keep our your fees low and commission high by keeping it in-house. Also, the second paper, you guys, the green one, this is Heritage Financial. We also offer a best rate guarantee that will beat any lender's rates by $100. Also, if you just allow our in-house uh, finance company, Heritage Financial, to pre-qualify your buyer, you'll get a $100 Home Depot card. So again, we appreciate your business in this. We have 12 loan officers. We do have uh, one of our experienced loan officers that's just going to speak in a minute. And uh, he's just going to go over a couple of things. Also, you guys, Taylor Properties is recruiting. You know, any agents from other brokerages that you might want to bring on? You get 100 bucks for each agent that joins our brokerage. And uh, just also promoting our Rockville office. For those that don't know, we did open a satellite office in Rockville. Uh, it has conference rooms, and uh, you can have unlimited scanning, unlimited uh, um, faxing. There are charge for copies, six cents if you're using that that uh, location, and it's open evenings and weekends to meet clients as well. So we want to offer that to you. And our, we have three other satellite offices, one in Largo, one in Waldorf, and again, the Rockville office. We also have our branch office in Silver Spring. So if you ever need to meet clients or have settlements, Mary is our branch manager there. And again, it's another location that is offered to you at no extra charge. Um, I want you to enjoy tonight, you guys. We are going to have a great guest speaker that's going to teach you about social media and helping you to promote yourself. And she'll be speaking in just a few more minutes. But right now, I'm going to give the floor to Dave Keeney, our loan originator. So come on up, Dave. Hey, thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, got the three things on my list. Let, let's see if I can call them all. One of them is thank you, thank you, thank you. It's, it, last year was a good year. This year starting off as a good year. It's nice to be busy. It's nice to help uh, agents to help the company out. Uh, number two is a scolding. Uh, this week, um, at, at agents have, have given me a couple of things that everybody should know about. If you don't know about it, I, I, because it came in this week, let's talk about it for a second. Um, changes to the contract or ratify that's going to sell it in three days. You don't get an extra two thousand dollars from the seller to flip it over to the buyer side as closing help. That means it's got to go back through underwriting. It's got to be within parameters, and it can delay stuff for you. Uh, yes, it's a very solve. It's, I can solve that problem. But just don't make those changes at the last minute. Keep your loan officer in the loop. And, and, and whether it's me or somebody else, let them know what's happening with the home inspection. And if the seller agreed to give them $2,000, you can't do it on a settlement statement the way they had it set up. Number two is if when you're getting ready to extend a contract for some reason, probably a good idea to talk to your loan officer and say, hey, when does the lock expire? Uh, another one this week. So just keep, keep the loan officers in the loop as you're going through the transaction so that they can at least you know, steer you in the right direction on how to write an addendum and get things worked up. Um, In-house agents. Um, 
challenging deals and things to look at. Um, I, I love these deals, straight FHA, straight VA, straight conventional. I, that's really how I make my living. But because you guys are in-house agents and you've got support here for in-house deals, you get a little bit extra service. Um, I have one that came in two weeks ago. I'm still working on it, Max Health. Max not here yet, he was back up traffic. But Max Health helped me on it. Uh, it's a listing for one of our agents. It's a $750,000 listing. She's been through a divorce. She's got four kids and a dog. Uh, she wants to sell the big house and move into a $350,000 townhouse where she, the kids can stay and the dog can stay. Um, she's got five open accounts that are 120 days past due for $70,000. Her credit score is a 572. We can go down to, on, on straight FHA, we can go down to a 580, but it's it's a couple points to the, to the bad. But when she sells this house, she can have a lot of cash. Um, I looked through her divorce decree, it's that thick. I've never seen a fatter divorce decree. $4,000 of uh, child support, guess what? can't use it to qualify. They're going to be 18 years old before she, uh, uh, within three years. So she's got to be based off her sole income. With that credit score, with those five collections of 60, not collections, 180 past due, <clears throat> when she sells the house, she'll be able to pay it off. So there's uh, uh, credit simulators that, that I use. And I simulated what her score would be when she sold the house and when she paid it off. That's going to be FHA qualified. Uh, so that's a, that's the type of service that repeat and in-house agents get. And, and the, the loan amount for paying gains not going to be real big. It's going to be about two hundred thousand if you put one hundred and fifty thousand towards the transaction. But that this is huge for our agent. And. I still have a little bit of work to do because I don't want her to pay those debts off when it's sold and, and, and then end up holding the bag. So we've got underwriters that we send a lot of files to and they take a look at them too. So, you know, like I said, it's challenging, it's fun. That, that's why I, I like this business. It actually makes me think. Uh, but I do like straight, easy ones too. And that's another thing about the market. The market's been rolling the first three months of the year. I'm a little bit slower than, than in the last 30 days or so. So if you got anything coming up, be sure to give me a call because I've got a little bit of time to help you guys out. Uh, appreciate you all for coming. Uh, I'm in the office every day. But the best way to reach me is that direct line, the 301 number. If you don't have it, just let, let me know. I'll give it to you. You can reach me weekends, weeknights, uh, whatever. Uh, anyway, again, thanks for coming out. Um, I don't, not sure who the next speaker is, but um, here comes the woman. All right. Thank you, Dave Keeney. Thank you, Dave. Well done. Okay, so if you want to pull out your white ticket, we're going to do a few giveaways before we get started. So you get a white ticket, and I have uh, several bottles of wine up here and T-shirts. So let's see, I'm mixing this up. Oh, I think I'll just get that one that jumped right out of the picture. So here it is, 
184. Okay. Anthony. I'll grab your ticket and then you can pick your choice. T-shirt or a bottle of wine. Your choice. Whichever one. Okay, I'll do one more. 513167. 513-167. There you go, you're, you're uh, winning of choice. Okay, so, again, you have your two Dirty Paint tickets, compliments of Heritage Metal and Heritage Financial. They are for cocktails, rail, uh, alcohol, and house beer and wine. Our next speaker, you guys, her name is Ricky Schneider. She is a local Amarillo County resident and she owns Web Girl Technology. She's going to be our guest speaker tonight explaining about how to really draw up your business through social media. So let's give it up for Ricky Schneider. Okay, I speak kind of loud, but I'm going to use the microphone anyway. So I live in Crofton. My name is Ricky Schneider. I grew up in Bowie, Maryland too far away, and um, when I was in the seventh grade, my dad was my hero, and I wanted to be just like him, so I took a construction class because he was in construction, and I've always been a real girly girl, polished my nails, and I had to build a knee wall. Well, that didn't go over too well with me. So I wasn't happy with this construction class. And I was so lucky because my dad came up to the school and spoke with my counselor about this construction dilemma. And my math teacher stood up for me and said, she's really good at math. Let's put her in computer programming. And that's what really started my love for technology. So I started Web World Technology in 2009. I used to work for large companies like Computer Sciences Corporation, building websites and database programs for them. And I was working in an outdated program. And I'm sure you can understand if, if any of you come from corporate America, there's some frustration. And I really wanted to connect with a technology that I believed in. And I wanted time freedom because I started to have a family, kids, and I wanted to have that flexibility in my life as well. So that's kind of my backstory. So I started Web World Technology in 2009, and I'm thrilled that I'm still uh, able to make it a full-time career, and I really have everything that I want. My job tonight, though, is I know you guys are experts at your field, and have devoted a lot of time and education and what you've learned as realtors. And I really hope that you are the best realtor you can be. If I can just empower you with some tips about technology, about advertising online, how to get more customers online, if you want to work with me, wonderful. If you don't, if you work with someone else, that's okay too. But I want you to have the opportunity to get some education and try and be the best that you can be. That's my goal. This is a little slide that I came up with. This graphic here sort of represents what I feel is the complete digital marketing life cycle. You really want your website to be the best that it can be. You want it to be the centerpiece for your agency, for your brokerage, for your team, or for you as an independent realtor, right? You want people to be able to search for properties there, learn a little bit about who you are, and what separates you from your competition. But how do you get people there? So many people tell me, I love my website, but nobody goes to it. That's why I developed this slide. You really have to have a logo that kind of represents you, a nice professional headshot. How many people in here 
have a personal Facebook account? How many people in here are on are full-time realtors? Okay, good. Um, social media is a great way to get your name out there. Does everyone have a website associated with their business? Yeah, okay. Do you know what search engine optimization is? I, I just took a webinar a few weeks ago. I, I personally do have a personal interest in real estate, although I'm not licensed. Um, but one of the things that realtors are separating themselves from the competition online is they're doing something called Google AdWords. That's called search engine marketing. You're actually paying Google so that your listing gets shown first. We'll talk more about that. Electronic newsletters. How often are you sending out your listings or what you're looking for or your story through electronic newsletters? I maybe have about 800 people on my email list, but I send out a newsletter maybe once or twice a month. Every time I send out that newsletter, I, I get, I close a deal. I get a, a, a hit and somebody calls me and says, I need a website. Um, your social media is just as important as your website now as a realtor. And we're going to talk about Google some more. Face-to-face -face networking. You guys have a great team, and I think you have an advantage. When I go out to meet with my competition, a lot of times they're like, why does this website person want to meet with me? I make websites. Well, there's two of my competitors that I really like on a personal level. But by getting to know them more professionally and what they offer, and providing them with a demonstration of what I offer, I've been able to work with them. I hired one of their companies as a subcontractor to me. Another co company hired me to work on three sites for them. So get to know the listings that other agents have. Build a tribe of trusted com comrades that you can count on. Yesterday I made a mistake. I wrote $200 in an agreement instead of $800. And the first thing I did was I called one of my friendly competitors and said, what should I do? You know, it, it doesn't always have to be that dog eat dog world. You know, be friendly, get to know your competition. Take the time to do face-to-face -to -face networking too, okay? <laughs> Also, this is kind of casual, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to interrupt me, okay? So, are you where you want to be? Do you know that 2017 is almost over? <coughs> We're almost halfway there. I have a typo here that should say 2017. So, if you think about this for a minute, and you can write it down if you want, but you don't have to. I want you to take a minute just to think about what makes you happy as a realtor in your career. What's your favorite thing to do? Is it to show houses? Is it to write up the agreements? Do you love the paperwork? Are you using social media? You know, what makes you happy? What parts of your work make you happy? What parts of your work make you crazy? Is it the paperwork? Is it the thought of social media? Is it the putting the, I don't know all the details, somebody may have to help me, but when you list the house in the MLS or MRIS, whatever that system is, does that make you crazy? What you really need to think about is then what needs to happen to shift the balance so you can have more joy and increase your product productivity. What needs to happen? Every year, for me personally, I was always behind in my bookkeeping. Every year, every year, my husband would 
Where, where's your balance sheet? We need to do our taxes. Where's your mileage? Well, all that stuff, right? How many people get that? Finally hired a bookkeeper. She charges me $50 a month. What the heck was I thinking? I am so much more productive because I don't have to worry about it. Right? So I finally did this exercise myself with a business coach and let it go. And I am so much more productive now. And my husband's happier too. Where do you spend your time? What's your best return on investment? Where should you be spending your time? Should it be on listing appointments, buyer showings, networking, rental agreements, rental showings, paperwork, previewing properties? Do you get busy on social media, like just gossiping? Are you spending a lot of time in home inspections? Are you preoccupied with telephone calls? I listened to this great TED talk over the weekend, and it's called How to Multiply Your Time. The gentleman's name is Rory Vaden in this picture here. And he gives a talk about the opposite of time management, and not necessarily managing your little schedule not necessarily prioritizing what's important and what's going to happen first. It's very interesting. So I urge you to look at that uh, Rory Baden, his TED Talks on YouTube. But think about that. Where do you spend your time? Leadership isn't about getting things done right. It's, getting thing, it's about getting things done through other people, right? That's being a true leader. Anyone here have a real estate team? So you have multiple agents on your team? Anyone want to be there where you have multiple agents on your team? Where do you spend your money? Are you spending it on signage? Do you have a mobile app? Search engine optimization is trying to get your website at the top of the Google list. Search engine marketing is those Google AdWords where you're paying to have your name at the top of the list. Are you guys doing any blogging? Anyone in here doing any blogging? We talked a little bit about personal Facebook pages. Do you have a business Facebook page? Anyone have a business Facebook page? Good. Anyone have a business Facebook group? Have you tried any Facebook advertising? It's good stuff. Have you tried Facebook Live? Do you know what Instagram is? It's that app that's on your mobile phone only. It's great for pictures and videos. I want to focus tonight a little bit more on LinkedIn because that's a professional networking site. It's great. You can have a business page and do some advertising on there as well. I do see realtors doing a lot on Twitter as well. How many people in here are using Twitter professionally? What about Google Plus? Are you spending money on postcards? Postcards can be effective too. What's interesting is I stole this from one of my competitors. But look what they're talking about. How do buyers look for a house? Right there. How do buyers look for the house? What's the answer? Online. How do buyers find the house they buy? Online. So 
let's talk about Facebook because that, by large, is the largest social media platform out there. Basically, everybody's on it. It has 1.86 billion monthly active users as of May 2017. <laughs> um, if your phone does go off, I will look at you funny. We talked about business pages. It's pretty easy to set up a business page. I find with realtors sometimes, um, you use your personal profile to represent your real estate business. I've only seen this in real estate. It is against Facebook policy to use a profile, a personal profile, to represent something other than yourself as a person. Only in real estate, I've seen six companies permanently banned from Facebook. I don't know why that is. But I just want to make sure that you understand. You can have a business Facebook page for your real estate. And you can share information about real estate on your personal profile. But I also want to see cute pictures of your dog, or something else besides just this is my real estate business okay how often do you update your page do you post on your business facebook page on a regular basis believe it or not i'm part of a nationwide facebook mastermind group and industry standard is five to eight times a day now you can take that i mean i mean yes it's, it's, it's a lot now you can adjust that based on your audience. However, when you personally log into Facebook, do you see the same thing every time you go in? Because it's always changing. And that's why they say five to eight times a day. However, you can do little things like schedule things out. So the point is, Facebook is always changing. If someone Googles, your name in relationship to real estate, your Facebook page may rank higher than your actual website. That's fine, that's good, they're still gonna find you. But if you haven't updated your page in a month, they may think, oh wait a second, is Sydney still in business? and they may not call. I mean, think of it the other way. If you were a consumer and you stumbled upon somebody's Facebook page who hadn't been updated in a year, would you call that business to work with them? <laughs> How much money are you spending on Facebook advertising? Are you seeing your return on investment? Um, there's all sorts of tools that Facebook provides you with to look at what's the best demographic to target. You may think if you're selling a home in Annapolis that it's best to target a 10 mile radius around Annapolis or something like that. I do a little exercise with my clients. We had a workshop today with some of our clients on your ideal client. And there's a difference between a good client and an ideal client and what's that difference? What's your client's name? How old are they? What's something that they say to you? What's something they never say? Do they say, oh, I want a five bedroom house, and oh, by the way, I don't have any money for a down payment? Right? So these are little demographics you can play with. When I did it with a, a real estate company I was working with one time, they went through this exercise. And it turned out that we realized that if you were a Washington Redskins fan in a certain geographic reach, you are 147 times more likely to look at their real estate listings. So that's who we targeted when we did our advertising. It was really interesting exercise. 
Are you capturing leads on Facebook? You know you can get people to fill out a little form right from Facebook and they'll give you their name, their number, and their email address. When you're using Facebook Live, there's a whole little methodology about doing a Facebook Live. It's pretty easy to set up, but you want to create a buzz. You want people to tune in. So if you're having an open house and you're going to preview that house for other agents that might want to bring their customers on Saturday to see your open house, you may want to do a Facebook Live on Friday and let all your people in your tribe know, hey, preview this, because I might have something for your buyers to look at. Are you using the Facebook Pages Manager app on your phone? Does everybody have their phone with them, their smartphone? I give you permission to take it out if you want to. Have you ever tried to post on your business Facebook page but it keeps going to your personal from your phone? That's because you're not using the Facebook Business Pages app. It's a free app. If you go to the App Store or the Google Play Store, it's called Facebook Pages Manager. It's a white icon with an orange flag. Okay? So if you don't have time to do it now, that's fine. It may be a little slow or Wi-Fi, whatever. But please remember Facebook Pages Manager. And my real question for you is are you spending too much time and money trying to get training for yourself or your administrative staff on Facebook and it's not, you're not seeing that return on investment. Yes? I think honestly when I first started doing Facebook, sort of all the, in a way the things you're saying were not, people were not following. I mean, there are people I know in business, not in real estate, who are putting all kinds of information on there. There was a whole sort of uh, you know, strategy of how many personal times you're supposed to say something and then you say something about your business. And you're right, the page used to go back and forth between the personal and the business. And to me, it just seemed like for somebody who likes to sit down, get clear instructions, or be able to pick up the phone and get some clear guidance on how to, you know, to do it and not spend 50 hours, it seemed like that kind of information just was not available. Mm -hmm. So after a while, I've had a business Facebook page forever. It has a picture and a property on there. I don't even know who put it on there, honestly. Okay. So it, it just seems like you can't get good customer service unless you're going to really drop a bundle or somebody can teach you how to do something that has it, you know. So right. You so your it. question is, you have a business Facebook page, but you can't seem to access it to make updates and changes that you want to do. Access it, but it just doesn't seem like, if I, look, we're self-doers, right? You sit down and try to figure out how to do it, you map it out and do it. It just doesn't seem like you can get that kind of clear guidance unless you're going to read a five or page book. Right. Well, okay. So if you're looking to learn the basics of Facebook, I do teach workshops. I charge $50 for the workshop. I usually do them about once every other month. I am limited to 18 people in the classroom because I don't want a huge crowd It's not effective. So if you're interested in, in learning more about my workshops, please give me your card, okay? Um, there are simple things I can teach you. And a lot of times when I work with my clients, it's usually a combination thereof. So what makes a good client for me is someone who wants to spend some money on social media, right? What makes an ideal client for me is someone who wants me to be part of their social media team. So I can take the time to sit down with you and show you some basics so you can do some stuff on your own. And you can teach me more about your brand so I can do some stuff on my own too. And working together will become effective. So let's talk more about LinkedIn. LinkedIn has 467 million active users. Does anyone in the room have a business page for LinkedIn? You have a business page or a personal? Business, good, okay. So 
that's, look, out of the whole room, she's the only one, but several people have professional resumes, if you will, on LinkedIn. So think of it this way. Is it Terry? Yes. Can I pick on you? Yes. Deal. So let's say there's a company that's relocating their business and they're doing some research. Most of the time when businesses, small, medium, large businesses are looking for things like that, a lot of times they go to their professional network, right? They would go to their professional network on LinkedIn and they may stumble across Terry's page and say, look, this lady's with it. She's got a business page set up on LinkedIn. We're going to relocate 15 of our employees because we're opening this office in Anne Arundel County, Maryland. Let's call her. They're not going to pick up their phone and call grandma or their cousin or something like that and say, do you know any realtors in Maryland? <laughs> right? They're going to look online. Are you paying for any LinkedIn advertising, Terry? Okay. And honestly, if you have a good budget with link for LinkedIn advertising, they will call you and they will help you do some advertising. So if you're ever interested, I would click that button and ask for somebody to help you and you will get a call back from a real person. <laughs> How about your regular LinkedIn profile? Is that current? Does it contain your real estate information? Does it say things like real estate website and then it links to your website? Do you have the LinkedIn app on your phone? It's just so easy, like if you're taking the kids to karate class and you have 15 minutes to spare, you could post something on LinkedIn. You can also write articles on LinkedIn, like a blog that kind of brands you. You can blog in LinkedIn as well. And there's really a lot of great information, a lot of good articles out there. Um, there's this gentleman in Annapolis, his name is Steve Hall. He's a sales trainer, and he has some really great articles on LinkedIn. So I want to encourage you guys all to download the LinkedIn app on your phone. Update your professional resume. It's very business to business. You can create call to actions. You can have people endorse your skills and give you professional reviews on LinkedIn as well. You can also write about projects. So if you're working with a, what's it called when a person, a move up buyer, move up buyer, right? So I'm gonna sell my first home and I wanna buy the, the big home with some acreage, my forever home, okay? So if you're working with someone like that, you might want to document that in a project. Start a little Word document. You know, I met Jane Doe and John Doe. They live in Bowie, and they have a three-bedroom townhouse, and now they want to buy a bigger house in Bowie. They love the community. So you can build that project, put it in your LinkedIn, and then they can endorse you on LinkedIn. What's great about that is that becomes searchable. So if a company is relocating to Bowie and they search Bowie Real Estate, your endorsement may now come up. So I really like LinkedIn because it's very professional and it's a way realtors can separate themselves from the competition. There are simple ways you can include social media in your everyday work. Do you often feel like, I just don't have time? And I know sometimes it's overwhelming when you don't know how to do it. And I would be happy for you guys to come to, like I said, some of my workshops, so we can teach you how to do it yourself. But there are times in your day you may be waiting for a buyer 
and you may be sitting in your car and you might want to snap a picture of a property you're about to build into and see. You can put that on your Facebook business page, you can put that in LinkedIn, Instagram, Snapchat, Pinterest, you're doing it all, right? And that's okay if you don't do it all. Honestly, I would rather you pick one or two things to focus on and do them really well than spread yourself too thin and look like a fool. Each platform is different. I personally don't believe in things like Hootsuite to blast out information. I personally don't believe you should connect your Instagram with your Facebook account. And the reason why is because when you're on Instagram, <coughs> You caption things differently and use 100 hashtags, but when you're on Facebook, you don't do it that way. So you have to know the platform you're working on. There's simple ways we can teach you some basic things, and you can do a great job, and we can work together. That's what you should have in whoever's working with you on your social media. I love those real estate um, third party tools, I don't know the names of any of them off the top of my head, but you know how they'll post general articles about the, um, the uh, climate, you know, the mortgage industry, they'll post about staging your home, some general articles, that's all good, that's all good, but you need to tell us what separates you. Who are you? Why am I choosing you over someone else? So I'm okay with those automated services, but I want you to be able to be able to tell your story too. And that's really important. We accomplish all that we do through delegation, either to time or to people. So I'm circling back to Rory Baden. When he talks about time, right? There's only so many hours in a day. So you can spend time on social media and money on social media, but again, where are your result producing activities? Where do you need to be as a realtor? So, I have to share this with you because I don't know how I'm doing on time, but I have to share this with you because I did these webinars about Google AdWords for real estate and it was just mind blowing how incredible, what a big difference they're making for a lot of realtors. So Google AdWords means I'm going to pay some money, maybe it's $25, maybe it's $2,500, I have someone who pays $1,600 a month in Google AdWords. but. Did you know that Google gets over 600 searches per month on Sell My Home Fast and Sell My House Today? Those two terms. So if you were paying Google to pick you when those terms were searched, that would be a good thing. Okay? If this technology is confusing, I understand. I, I'm a little bit of a geek and I, I love this stuff. But So let's talk about Blogger a little bit. Raise your hand if you have a Gmail account. Do you all know you have a free blogging account that comes with Gmail? It's very effective and an inexpensive way to market yourself as a realtor or as a broker. Again, it gives you time to tell your story, right? A little bit. So, no lie, I scored a contract because this woman found out that I liked fabric. My girlfriend and I actually started a, a company last year. This fashion house was looking for someone to team up with for their social media and I was talking to them about my love of fabric. They gave me a tour of their facility and I picked up certain things and I was, oh this raw silk feels so good. 
I love it. And she took note of what I was saying, and she said, you know fabric. I'm like, well, I don't know fabric. I know technology. I know social media. I know a little bit. But because she knew that I had that love of fabric, it separated me from the pack. Does that make sense? So if you want to separate yourself from the pack, you might want to have a blogger account because you can talk more about who you are as a person. If you integrate your blog with your website, which most websites can do rather easily, it gives your website 434% more index pages with Google. So if you want your website to be up there with Google, you need to start blogging. A blog is usually something short, like 300 to 500 words. It could be a great story about, you know, this this uh, client that wants to buy their move-up property in Bowie. Why Bowie is a great community. 60% of consumers feel more positive when they read that custom experience, when they get to know you, your personal story, and you as a professional. When you create custom content, your professional clients feel like they are being, you're being helpful, right? So I um, often write blogs on frequently asked questions. What are those questions that your clients ask? How much of a down payment do I need? That might be a good blog. It depends. Well, what are some of the factors that go into it? Are you a first-time home buyer? You know, how much of a down payment does a first-time home buyer need? Simple things like that you could blog about and really separate yourself from the competition. Show your connections. Who are you connected to that can help get them help with their down payment? Just be honest and credible and make people feel comfortable. So, in closing, if you could do me a favor, I don't have any magic sales pitch, although I want to work with all of you. Um, I just, if you're interested in a free consultation, you can pass me your card and just put a C on it. If you know someone that might be interested in working with me, you can pass me your card and put an R on it. If you just want to be on my mailing list so you know more about our workshops, just pass me your card, okay? Um, and I am open. Do you guys have any questions? My goal here is I hope you guys are successful real estate professionals. I want you to look professional when you go to meet with a client. And I want you to look professional when you are online as well. I want you to have a website that you are proud of. And I want you to have a website that you're proud to send your customers to. Again, I'm Ricky Schneider. My business is Web World Technology. And if your website is a key, call Ricky. <laughs>
Let's uh, bring out. I don't know if they're in the um, in the trays or not. Ooh, almost went down, but I did. Yep, everything's ready. So we've got two serving stations. You can go ahead and grab your plates and uh, enjoy your dinner, you guys. Thank you for coming out. Ready?